Hi everyone, today I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on my rain barrel setup. I've had a few requests to do that because uh, my first video didn't quite have enough detail. So Now this first one here is what's called a first flush and I'll get into that in more detail later. But uh, what happens is this one fills up first, this one gets full, it diverts the rest of the water into the next five. All of the pipes here are connected at the bottom. So as this one fills up, they all fill up at the same rate. Now on the last rain barrel here, I have uh, an old car antenna and I've got a little rubber ball and uh, there's a float inside, a piece of styrofoam and as the rain barrels fill up, it, uh, it'll go right up in the air like that and it'll indicate uh, how much water is left. Rain barrels are neat, but uh, they can be kind of unsightly. So I should show you what we've done with ours to cover them up. So what we've done is we've just made this this fence uh, so that when we're sitting over here in our patio it kind of covers it all up it doesn't look too unsightly and you may notice that uh, there's some mirrors that we've attached to the back of it you can see as i approach it here and uh, there's one of them right there and there's there's another one and there's the barrels in the back there and uh, we didn't pay anything for these we've uh, we just go around on garbage day. Yeah, we're garbage collectors and uh, we've gotten all of these mirrors pretty well for free or people that just want to get rid of them, they, they've given them to us. So you can see that there's a, uh, we've got seven mirrors on the back here and it really gives it kind of a, uh, a neat look. You can't really see through this fence to see the rain barrels at all. It's kind of cool. So here's what the rain barrels look like from up on the roof. Not that people will be on the roof to look down, but uh, it just gives you a different perspective on what it looks like. There's the, the uh, fence with the mirrors on it. And I have this stuff in my eaves trough called uh, Alurex that does a great job of uh, keeping leaves and stuff out. Uh, I'm not a spokesman for the company. I don't sell it. Uh, they're not paying me any endorsement fees for that. It's just that I did a lot of research on what to put in my gutters so that I wouldn't have to uh, come up here to clean out the leaves because I've got these two large maple trees in my yard and uh, they dump a lot of leaves on the roof. And we were up here three, four times a year to clean out the junk. But since I put this stuff on, it works fantastic. Now right here, we've got a ball valve and it just opens and closes and we can take one of the watering cans and just plop the hose into it and turn this on and it fills them up easily. So once the five rain barrels have filled right to the top and there's no more room, right on the back here I have a two inch ABS pipe that's connected into there and uh, it just goes down and it just goes out towards the front and it's attached to one of these automatic extendable uh, downspout connectors. I forget what these things are called, but uh, they're kind of cool. As soon as they fill with water, they extend themselves out automatically, and then as they uh, slowly uh, drain the water out, they retract themselves. So it's right out of the way, so there's no pipes to, to trip over. So let me see if I can explain to you in simple terms what a first flush does. So on your roof, there's, uh, you know, there's bird poop, there's bird pee, there's, you know, squirrels, chipmunks, whatever gets up on your roof. And, uh, you know, there's environmental dust and, and uh, junk on your roof. And so when it rains, all of that comes down and goes into your rain barrels. And you don't want to have all that uh, biological junk going into your rain barrels because it just uh, festers. And then uh, over a short period of time, it starts to stink. So what you, you have is what's called the first flush. The first barrel takes all the junk that's off of the roof and the eaves troughs and uh, then once it's full, then the fresh water starts to go into the next rain barrels that you have and that way it keeps that water fresh and clean. So um, in this first barrel here, uh, I have a float inside. The water comes into there, it uh, fills up, plugs up the pipe, and then it's diverted into the next five and you've got all the fresh water in there. So that's what the first flush does is it is it flushes all the junk that's collected on your roof and in your eaves troughs. And the good part about this first flush is that it automatically resets itself. This valve right here is always cracked open just a little bit. You can adjust this yourself, but what happens is as it rains, it fills this first flush up. And then uh, when the rain stops, uh, because this is cracked open just a little bit, it slowly just drains itself empty. 
so then it's ready to go for the next time it rains and uh, you don't have to you know remember to drain it yourself or anything it's kind of automatic that way so attaching these flanges to these barrels is, is pretty straightforward because the plastic in the bottom of any of these barrels, whether they're the blue ones, these black ones, uh, any shape, the, the bigger these barrels get, the thicker the plastic. So there's, there's quite a bit of beef when you put the screws in to hold them right to the plastic. So you can see that uh, this one here, it's got a half inch written right on there. So this is a half inch flange. They come in uh, many different sizes. And before you put it on, you just take uh, this little guy and it's an adjustable hole saw and it's fully adjustable. You can see how I just rotate these two discs and it uh, and it goes to different sizes so you can dial it into whatever size you want and then you drill a hole in the plastic barrel. There's a nut right here it tightens up to hold the disc tight and as far as the screws go you want to use stainless steel screws because if you just use regular screws the other side of the screw inside of the barrel it rusts like crazy and then if you ever go to take this apart it just destroys the hole that you've uh, that you've uh, made in the plastic with the screw and it's just no good. And here's the size of the screws that I used for this whole rain barrel. This one size fits everything on this whole project. They're stainless steel, they do not rust and they work fantastic. All you have to do with, with most of the holes is just drill a very tiny pilot hole before you put it in and use a screwdriver to tighten them up so that you don't, uh, if you use a, a power drill it may strip out the plastic so you just use a, uh, use a hand screwdriver to tighten them up. And then at the base of all the other five barrels where they all connect together with the, the pipe here, same thing, use the same screw right here, stainless steel. And you can see on this flange right here, there's number one, it's a one inch flange. As far as the hose goes, don't go to any expense buying this at the hardware store because it can be pretty pricey. What you want to do is just uh, is cruise your neighborhood on garbage day and look for anybody that's throwing out a vacuum cleaner because vacuum cleaner hose, it's all the same size and it fits perfectly with a one inch flange and the pipe that you fit in there it fits right over top of the pipe perfectly. And the piece that threads into this flange, I just purchased some one inch by three inch, uh, what's called, uh, this is called a nipple, and I just took it and used the hacksaw and I cut it right in two. And that threads into there and then the hose slips right over top of that part without the thread on it and then you just use a clamp to tighten it down and to seal it. Now all of these flanges and when you thread the pipe in and when you put the hose on for everything I used all-purpose silicone. The cheapest stuff you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's it works perfect. And just use that and put it on the surface of the flange before you screw it onto the barrel. Put a little coat inside of the uh, vacuum cleaner hose before you clamp it and uh, you'll have no issues with leaks whatsoever. As far as the pipe connection goes with these four inch pieces, I use the same stainless steel screws. If you glue it, you can't take it apart and make adjustments as you go along because this is a, this is a fun project. It, it's experimental, you don't know how it's going to work and you want to be able to make adjustments as you go. So uh, by putting screws in, you can take the screw out and pull the pipes apart and make your changes. And plus, if there's a slight bit of leakage around these pipes when it's raining, who cares? It's, it's just rain. You're saving most of it. There's only drips coming out. It's only at the bottom of the barrels where the flanges are that you don't want it leaking out because you want to preserve all of the rainwater that you've uh, collected. Now, as far as this uh, ABS pipe goes here, I used some smaller screws. So this is two inch ABS pipe that I've used as the overflow because it's uh, big enough to allow lots of water to flow out of it. So to connect this onto the barrel, all you do is, uh, I've got some inch and a half here. I'm just gonna use this as an example. So I've got a short piece right here. And on the inside, you just take one of these uh, straight pipe connectors and you put it on there and you push it right, jam shut, and then the barrel will be in between the flange and the piece right there. And then with this 45, you do the same. You cut a short piece and you put this in. And the good thing about this is once it's on there, you can then rotate this around. So if I want to get this to go straight to the ground, I can rotate the 90 and I can rotate this. And you can see as I do that, that the angle of this changes so you can get it to go straight to the ground and it works out perfect. And like I said, after you have everything ready to go, you just use these little screws to put it together so that uh, if there's any minor adjustments you have to make, you can take the screw out, move it, put the screw back in and away you go. Now when you attach the four inch, to the top of the barrel here. All I did was I marked this off and I used a jigsaw and it cuts really nice. And then when you're connecting this, using this as an example again, so pretend this is the four inch and you just cut a piece of four inch pipe, stick it through the plastic, then use a straight pipe connector to sandwich the plastic top here right in there. And squeeze it together and use the screws to hold it together. And let me show you how I made this level indicator.
so all it is is some half inch PVC pipe. There's the straight pipe connector and then the same thing on the top, another piece of pipe into a straight piece and, and then the lid is sandwiched between the two connectors as you push together. Piece of uh, styrofoam and like I said earlier this is an antenna from a car and uh, it won't rust, it's stainless steel. And then on the top here is just a little rubber ball from the dollar store with a hole drilled in it and it uh, has a resistance fit, it slides up and down and you can uh, slide it to wherever you like it so you can tell how much water is in there. And if you're wondering what these screws are for, I had a piece of wood on there before which kind of rotted and fell apart. So I've just got those screws in there to fill the holes. And on the top of each of the barrels, I do have a breather hole, half inch hole I've cut, and a piece of uh, two inch by two inch square piece of screen and siliconed it on there. So now we'll take uh, the first flush apart and I'll show you how it works and how I made it. There is one wood bracket that I did have to make and all that does is it supports the weight of the, uh, of the plastic PVC pipe here and the weight of the eaves trough as it sits down in here because the uh, black plastic, it does soften up in the sun a little bit and it was starting to kind of droop a little. So I made up this little support bracket here to take the weight. So here's the connections to those first two barrels. So this one's for the first flush and then after that it goes into this one which is the fifth barrel and then that leads into the other four. So all we have here is an elbow, a T, a straight piece, another elbow, that's a straight coupler right there, and over here this is not a straight coupler. What this is is just a piece of four inch uh, PVC pipe like this connected onto there with screws straight through. Now I'll explain to that to you in just a second. So, um, so what we have here is we have a, a two liter pop bottle and this, is, uh, this has got some pressure in it. Um, I did use uh, a ball at first and what I found was the ball would float up, it would plug the hole, but then this height of water on top would just push the ball down and it would flow in. But with a pop bottle, uh, because of its length, it's almost like three balls uh, stacked on top of each other. And so it has the pressure that when the water rises, pushes against there it really seals well so let's go over this one more time so it comes uh, down there into here fills the barrel up with the first flush uh, junky water this floats up and seals it then it flows across and into this side so if you use a coupler a straight coupler on this side just like this one the bottle fits right inside of the hole and it'll just kind of stay there for good. It'll probably stick in there and it won't come down because you want it to seal and then float down. So you don't want to use a four inch coupler over here. You just want to use a piece of four inch pipe. And then these are just an uh, inch and a half PVC pipe. There's some elbows on the bottom here. And you can see there's the uh, stainless steel screws holding it together. I drill the hole big enough here to fit the screw right in so that I could uh, I mean, put the screw inside of the pipe and then straight in. And I've got some washers uh, shimmed the pipe out a bit on all three of the pieces of pipe because uh, if you don't then the pipe is then stuck between the pipes so you need some, uh, some space just to hold it out. And uh, like I was saying this is inflated and all I did was I went to an automotive store and I bought a tubeless tire valve to <clears throat> drill the hole in the pop cap and pulled it into it, threaded it on and I inflated it to about uh, 15 psi and that's been inflated now for a good three four years. It hasn't lost any of its pressure so that works really well. And then that slides back into there. Now you may have noticed there's a, a cap in here and wondering what that was for, but all I did was I, I drilled a hole in the top and I just put a clean out cap on there so that I could look in there and observe what was going on to see if uh, this, this uh, pop bottle thing was gonna work, and it did. And the same over here, as so I had drilled this out, I just used some silicone to cover that hole up. And the same thing, just so I could observe to see how much water was flowing over there to the next ones, and it, uh, it does work really well. 
so I hope this video has helped guys and uh, the one good thing about this is you can uh, look at a whole bunch of rain barrel setups and you can take little bits and pieces of each of the projects that you like and that you know uh, that you can do yourself and you can combine them to come up with the perfect system that's uh, perfect for you so I hope you enjoyed it so subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and we'll see you next time